Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to address a somewhat controversial topic in the automotive community. Half tons versus three quarter tons for towing. Um, my perspective on this is coming from a, what I'll call, passionate half ton truck owner and now being a three quarter ton truck owner towing the same trailer. So first things first, um, let's kind of set the, set the parameters here. My personal trailering needs are about six to seven thousand pound camper towed anywhere from really five to seven thousand miles a year let's call it it's kind of about the amount of towing that I do maybe a little less in certain years but like I did a Florida trip last year from upstate New York so that was you know closer to that five thousand to seven thousand mile a year when you account for all my other trips so quite a bit of towing by most people's standards. I also have multiple vehicles so that I do have a car that I can drive, of course, if you watch the channel. Um, so it's not like I'm only driving the truck around. <clears throat> With the half ton, and I will put up some cat scale tickets to show this to you. Scenario number one, put up a ticket, is the truck with just the camper and kind of normal camping gear. Um, that's me, my dog, camper, a little bit of firewood maybe, grill, you know, the, the typical stuff you'd bring camping. If you look at that scale ticket, the half ton truck I was towing with was a 2005 Silverado 1500. It's rated payloads about 1218 I believe and the GVW is 6400. So if you look at those numbers, I am pretty close to max payload or a little over you know in the various scenarios where it's just me and the dog and the camper but you know what let's be honest the vast majority of people run their half tons a little over payload and typically don't have a ton of issues so arguably that's not a big deal right 100 200 pounds over whatever we'll talk more about that later so when you put the motorcycle in the bed i can show you another scale ticket suddenly that obviously changes now i'm over payload by about the weight of that motorcycle, obviously, because I've taken the 600 mile of the motorcycle and just added it to the equation and not really subtracted much. I would, however, take some tools out of the back seat that added up to a, really a couple hundred pounds, probably 150 pounds maybe, and I would move those from the back of the, you know, underneath the back seat of the truck, I'd move those to the camper, which at least helped, right? Get some of that weight on the axle of the trailer as opposed to the, um, you know, axle of the truck, right? So that's kind of what I did there. And that worked out pretty well um, overall. The only caveat here is I, after a period of time, noticed that I was just getting to the point where I was really starting to affect the long-term reliability of that truck. So yes, it was an 05, so it was an older vehicle for sure, right? That plays into the effect, you know plays into effect. However, a lot of the parts of it were new. The engine had been replaced. I replaced the engine. The rear end had been rebuilt. U joints in the drive shaft. The rear end yoke. Like a lot of this stuff was new, either proactively or because it broke. At say 180 thousand miles that the, when the truck had on it. So going into the last towing season last year, I had the most amount of new parts on this truck. Okay. And what I was finding was, I was breaking parts that had been replaced 30 to 70,000 miles ago, let's say, surprisingly quickly. And and I, I blew another rear end. Mind you, I don't like beat on this truck. I was towing with it, of course, and using it to do that. But I wasn't going out of my way to like do anything particularly bad with the truck. And uh, you know that, but that happened. And then I also um, had the rear yoke go bad on the rear end, which I really have like never heard of somebody's yoke going bad on a truck doing normal stuff. But yeah, I mean, I guess it can happen. It had a lot of miles on it, sure. Uh, the transmission blew originally at 135K, blew again at 200,000. However, two things. One, my transmission guy hooked me up, fixed it, made it right, even though it wasn't like technically under warranty at that point but he claims it was a very, very rare failure mode that he hasn't seen in a long time. Whether or not it was, whether or not it was because of towing, whether or not it was because 4L60s are garbage, you know, I don't know, it's 
hard to say. It, it is what it is. Um, but, uh, you know, so there, there's just a factor there, let's put it that way. And I had other various issues. But what it really made me realize was, at least that era of half-ton truck, it, it just isn't heavy duty enough to do long distance interstate towing in that five, six, seven thousand pound range. It, it just isn't. Like, I don't care what anybody says. I know there's somebody who's probably going to say, hey, I've towed, you know, 200,000 plus miles with my 05 and I had seven, 8,000 pounds behind it its entire life. Great, awesome, good for you. I'm really genuinely glad you had that experience with it. Uh, maybe you live in a flatter environment. Maybe you live out west in the middle of the mountains. Maybe you drive slower than I do. Whatever the scenario is, my specific truck clearly was not heavy duty enough for what I was doing with it. Whether I'm an abusive user, whether it's just the physical parts weren't solid enough, I don't know. I think most people conflate occasional weekend towing within say zero to three hours away from home towing their boat, towing their camper, you know, loading up the kids and the wife, being 600 pounds over payload, and going and towing to the local campground, right? That is a completely different ball game than when you're 600 pounds over payload and you're towing 700 miles in a day. You're going to, you know, from New York State to Florida, you're going to all these different places, right? Northern Maine, like, it, it it's just not the same thing. The, the wear and tear on the vehicle, all the time spent at higher RPMs of the engine and just the extra heat that goes into the rear end when you're doing tank to tank to tank drives. I mean, I put an auxiliary gas tank on that truck. So I'm literally burning more fuel than the truck can even hold from the factory tank to tank while towing a relatively close to its max towing capacity. I mean, you gotta figure that over time that you know, it's gonna wear things out. So it just made me realize that you know, it's just not, it's not a viable long distance towing vehicle for what I need, the weights I'm towing, even though they're not that high, the weights I'm towing. <clears throat> Another element to that that I kind of had an epiphany on, right? If you look around America's highways, God knows I've driven a lot of them, in the north, in the north and southeast anyway. When, when you see older trucks towing, and typically you don't, but when you see older trucks towing trailer, they are almost always 25 and 35 hundreds, and they're almost always diesels. Now that's not to say that the gassers of the 25 hundreds and 35 hundreds were less reliable necessarily, but I'm just telling you what I've seen, right? I see tons of third gen Cummins, mid 2000s Silverado diesels, and Ford diesels. Not as many Ford diesels, honestly, because that's 6.0 era, and that's like, you know, 7.3s are kind of getting old, and then 6.0, 6.4 era were, you know, not the most reliable. So you see a lot of the third gen Rams and the, and the Silverados, but I really don't see a lot of out of state plated half ton mid 2000 Silverados towing significant size loads. And not to say that it can't be done. I mean, I did it for freaking 10, 15,000 miles worth of towing over the last three years. But it makes you wonder if people, other people have had these realizations and have had these breakdowns and have had the same thoughts I've had and realized I need to upgrade my vehicle if I'm going to be doing this application, right? It just makes me wonder. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But it, it I have noticed that. It has been a very real correlation that I've made. So that's that's interesting thing to think about. And that's go the same goes with mid 2000s Ford trucks too or, or Rams. I don't see a ton of them. Again, towing what looks to be anyway long distance towing out of state. Obviously you don't necessarily know where somebody's going, but just you can sometimes tell based on where their plates are from. And you know if you're in the middle of Georgia and a truck's covered in salt in the winter time, you know that they were coming from somewhere out of state, right? That kind of thing. So just kind of getting an idea there. Um, so all those things are rolling around my mind. So I said this in another video, so I won't go over this again, but I originally looked at a max tow package half tons, but the realization that I had was even a max tow package wouldn't have the payload that I really need. I could have gotten the payload as high as like 1,900, maybe 2,000 pounds, really 1,900 pounds. And that would have been good, but I still,
still would have really been right at max payload with the bike, right? If I'm six, 700 pounds over on 1,218 pounds payload, at 1,900, I'm gonna be right there. It's just math, right? So, it just, that wasn't so appealing to me to just buy a new truck and immediately max it out. No, I'd be within its rated capacities, which is good. And again, most people are gonna be like, ah, you can go over that number. They, they do that for, you know, uh, government, you know, registration reasons, and yada, yada, yada. I actually kind of somewhat agree with some of those statements. I really do. But again, I found that just ignoring the payload and going five, 600 pounds over, although it tows fine, like physically the brakes fine, it corners fine. It was never unsafe. I was never putting anybody in danger. But I guess the thing I never realized was I was putting the truck in danger, right? I was damaging the truck or at least accelerating what would have otherwise normally worn out. At least I truly believe that. So that kind of made me take a step back and I said to myself, why not a 2500, right? I mean, this vehicle, a 2500 series truck is made to tow things, like truly on a commercial basis, right? People don't talk about this with these tow ratings, right? It's a duty cycle thing. If you're towing 14,000 pounds, once a year, let's say, an EcoBoost F-150 or a 6.2 Chevy Gas or whatever, rated, spec'd out perfectly, honestly, we'll probably tow it great. I mean, it's got the power, it's got the transmission gears. I mean, the chassis are stiff enough and they have decent enough suspension. Like, for that once or twice a year tow, like, you're gonna be fine. I mean, it, it is gonna be a little bit more on um, the chassis of the truck, but it'll do okay. It's the guy like me who's towing five, six, seven, 10, 15, 20,000 miles a year, where suddenly the tow rating doesn't even matter so much, is it's the frequency of towing. So even though I'm only towing six or 7,000 pounds, I'm doing it so often that I need the heavier duty vehicles so that I'm not wearing out the driveline components because they were never really made to have a you know 100% duty cycle where the truck is more hooked to a trailer to its life than it is. Right? So because of my multiple vehicle situation, I literally tow more miles than I drive empty on, on, a, on a truck, more or less. So that's the thing, right? Is that's where people, and I get it, right? 2500s are a little bit bumpy and bouncy. They're a little bit bigger typically, right? Per cab configuration. People don't want to daily drive a 2500. I get that. And that's why half tons are so popular. And that's why these maximum, maximum tow packages exist because they, you know, Ford and Chevy and Dodge and everybody wants to give people the option to like tow a heavy trailer once in a while and still drive a half ton truck. And I'm actually all for that. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. But you should know that if you're gonna do these longer out of state trips, and especially if you're gonna pack your whole family in there, you know, your four or five person family is the same weight as my motorcycle, right? So if you're gonna do that, you have to realize the fact that you are going to be over your payload ratings and over by a fair margin to a point where you will start to hurt the service life of that vehicle. And I just think it's important for people to understand that and realize that you know, you start pulling 7% grades in the interstate, over payload, up near your max tow capacities, uh, you know, down south where it's real hot out in the summer, you'll be okay for a while, but long term, things are going to wear. So just keep that in mind. I think the initial investment sucks. The fuel economy sucks. I get it. But man, I, I was never, I was absolutely never the got to get a 2500 to tow stuff guy, and I'm still not. But there is a certain just peace of mind, comfort, braking, stability. And again, I don't think my half ton ever did a bad job in those regards. It really did quite well, in fact. Um, it was shockingly stable and braked well and handled well, I would say, for how much load I was putting behind it. It did a great job. But this is just that much better. I guess the way I would rate a truck tow rating wise is I would do it based on duty cycle. So if your max tow capacity is 13,000 pounds per the J2807 towing standard, that duty cycle on that max tow rating is like, you know, one to 2,000 miles of towing a year, let's say, okay? Maybe even a little less than that, maybe 1,000 miles a year in towing. At 10,000 pounds, it's 2,000 miles of towing. At 8,000 pounds, it's 4,000 miles. Like, well, however you want to graduate it, right? I think that that would be a smarter way
way for manufacturers to rate to do tow ratings because it's more honest, right? And you can do the same thing with a 25 or 3500 too. You can't tell me a diesel dually is going to last as long towing 40,000 pounds as it would towing 20. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. I understand that everything is cooled in such a way that it's running within its design parameters and everything's very heavy duty, but it's just, you are inputting more torque, more horsepower into that entire drive line throughout the vehicle's life. You're making the water pump work harder. You're making the turbo on diesel work harder. You're making all the cylinder pressures therefore higher for more hour engine hours, right? Combined. So there's a threshold there where you're going to, not in a bad way, you're just going to wear things out a little faster. So that's where the duty cycle would be kind of cool to have it rated like that. And hey, maybe an F350 or a 3500 Chevy or whatever is is truly rated to a 100% duty cycle for its max tow rating. And if it is, then that's, that's great, that's awesome. Uh, but I don't think the half tons are, I, I really don't. Um, and, and I I don't want to be that guy to poo poo half ton towing, like I said but I just think it's smart for you to understand the limitations and understand that unless you have a very idealized setup and you tow a very certain way, you might prematurely wear things. Another element to all this, of course, that people have talked about on, on YouTube, of course, is weight distribution hitches. Let's talk about weight distribution and how it works and I'll show you some weight slips. So what you're gonna look at is my truck with the camper and um, really just kind of like standard camping gear essentially kind of a lighter load if you look at some future or some later scale tickets you'll see that they're a little bit heavier but uh, for this scenario you're just kind of looking at the camper you know on like a maybe like a local trip scenario so for all these numbers it's let's say you're taking on the same day back to back so they're all accurate in that sense too so the first way slip that I'll put up right here is me going onto the scale without the weight distribution hitch connected, okay? So if you look on that scale ticket, you basically have obviously a very uh, large amount of weight on the rear end of the truck, a little bit smaller amount of rear end, or smaller weight on the trailer axles and the front axle of the truck. So basically what's happening is, because it's a half ton truck, and you know it's a relatively big trailer for this half ton truck. It is just squatting the rear end a bit, and you're therefore just putting a lot of weight on the rear end. So I'm actually over payload capacity by a fair amount in that scenario. Um, not a crazy amount, but a little bit. So now we go back on the scale a second time with the weight distribution hitch properly adjusted and attached, and you look, and it's pretty neat because you you know as it says in the name. You can see that weight has been distributed to the trailer axle and to the front end of the truck. So now everything's nice and level and the weights are pretty consistent, right? So the ideal scenario, whether you're running weight distribution or not, the ideal scenario is that the rear axle of the truck is about the same as the front axle weight-wise for a half ton, okay? Typically, you're going to want to be in the similar realm. Now, you're never going to be perfectly there 50-50, right? Because you might need to over-distribute weight to achieve that or under-distribute weight, which that's okay. But generally speaking, that's kind of roughly what you're shooting for. You know, anywhere from, say, say 60-40 front heavy or 60-40 rear heavy. Like anywhere in that range is pretty reasonable. Um, also, you're shooting for restoring the better number to really look for is restoring your front axle weight that you had when the truck was empty. So if we pull up the scale ticket of the truck empty, which is right here, you can see the front axle weight is pretty similar empty as it is with the weight distribution hitch attached in the trailer. So that's a really good thing. That means you're going to maintain very similar steering feel towing as you do not towing. You know, you're not going to get that light front end feeling and it's not going to want to sway as much and stuff like that. Plus your sway hitch or sway bar that you have is going to make a big difference for that too. But just the loading scenario itself with the proper amount of tongue weight is going to get you pretty close. <clears throat> so with all that being said, let's talk about that empty, empty weight ticket that I'm putting up here. So 
most of the time people think, oh, like, you know, what's the, look up the curb weight of my truck, and then that's what I have for payload. Well, yes and no. I mean, yeah, if you drove to the dealer a lot, you're going to have that much. But by the time you account for a driver, you know, any passengers, all your gear, all your tools, your tonneau cover, the mud flaps you added, the whatever it is, right? Um, you start to lose payload faster than people realize. And on a half ton truck, an older one like this, payload rating is 12, like 18. It's not very high. 12, I think it's actually 1249, but whatever. It's pretty low. And if you look, that scale ticket's gets 6,000 pounds. That's me and my dog and just kind of generic like travel gear plus all the tools and stuff in the truck. So I only have 456 pounds of available payload to add cargo in the bed, to add tongue weight of a camper, like whatever it is that I want to add, right? That's not a lot of weight. So really, I mean, I technically shouldn't even really be hauling a trailer with that truck the way I have it set up at all. Because, you know, ideally you want to have a little bit of a buffer, 100 pounds maybe. So, you know what, you're going to haul a little landscaping trailer, right, with like a motorcycle on it. That, that's, that would be, that'd be fine. But if you want to get technical about it, you shouldn't even haul a trailer. Especially not a you know, two-axle trailer like I have. Now if we pull up another way ticket, another scale ticket, of the truck with kind of the same travel gear but with the motorcycle on the bed, unsurprisingly, that 6,000 pounds now goes to 6,800. Now, I think I might have had a little extra stuff in that trip. Maybe I was just had extra gear because the bike is like 600 and change wet plus ramps plus ratchet straps, all that kind of stuff. So call it 6,700 if you want, but that's the running weight of the truck if I'm hauling the motorcycle and I've got my dog, myself, and just my normal gear. That's 700 pounds, or sorry, that's you know 300 pounds over payload. So that's just the truck empty. That's not hooking a trailer up to it. I mean, that's where, now if you had, let's say you had a max tow, modern half ton. Well, the physical weight of the truck for a, any modern half ton is pretty similar to the weight of my truck, if not a little heavier, um, just because they're heavy duty drivetrains, but lighter body panels. So just for argument's sake, let's call them the same. Let's say the curb weight's about 5,200, which is what my truck is, call it, call it the same. And suddenly you find that even a max tow, you know, which has the higher payload baggage, doesn't really get you where you need to be for that. Because if I'm, you know, if I'm grossing, uh, if I'm at, or if I'm at 6,800 with the motorcycle, the GVWR, the total weight rating on a modern half ton max tow is like 72 or 7,300. All right. So, and the truck itself is generally a little heavier. So you basically wind up where with the trailer tongue weight, you know, four or 500 pounds minimal with my trailer. Really, you'll see later it's more. Um, you're gonna wind up, even with weight distribution, to where you are maxing that truck out because 6,800, or 7,300 minus 6,800, you're right there. And then if you add any more passengers, if you get a crew cab, and you wanna really actually take two extra people with you, you're and the fact that if you dial a weight distribution hitch in very, very well, yes, you can tow a heavier trailer with a half ton. Are most people going to do that? Potentially not. In which case they need to tow a lighter trailer or go find a buddy who really understands how weight distribution hitches work. So that's like the other element. If you get a 2500, you don't have to really worry about that that much, which is kind of nice. That never bothered me too much personally. Dial it in once and you just hook it up and go. I don't think it's a big deal, but people don't like to deal with them and I, I get that. I'll compare this to my scale ticket for the F-250. So this is towing a very similar trailer. It's actually not my camper technically, but it's a very, very similar trailer. And it is, if you look, I had, at this on this trip, I had myself, my parents, and my dog in the truck. Uh, they had actually just delivered the truck to me and I was driving back down North Carolina with it. Towing the trailer, no weight distribution hitch, nothing like that. Ton of stuff in the bed of the truck. They had packed some, you know, a fair amount of things. I had a bunch of stuff I needed to bring down. There were four motorcycles in the trailer, so nothing too crazy heavy, but there were some tools in there and stuff, and it you know, added up. And if you look, with all that, I had about 2,000 pounds payload. The truck itself is a little under seven empty, and the GBW of the truck with the tongue weight of the trailer kind of subtracted out of it. If 
figure is about 2,000 pounds total of payload. And so what's crazy is if I bought a max tow package half ton, even on that trip where it's just four people, three sorry, three people, a dog, and a little bit of gear, right? I would have maxed out with that with the tongue weight of the trailer, I would have maxed out that truck's payload capacity three days after I bought the truck. Think about that. So for my application, if I had bought a 1500 maxed out, three days after I bought it, I would have, on an 800 mile trip, maxed out the payload. Is it a big deal? Depends on who you ask. I just couldn't stomach spending 40, 50, 60,000 some dollars and maxing that truck to its tow capacity, or payload capacity. You do you, do you there's just some data for you. I would encourage you to, if you're going to buy a camper and run a half ton truck, keep these things in mind. Don't let the manufacturer's ratings, overzealous ratings sometimes, uh, make you think that your truck can comfortably handle, or I should say long term handle, more weight than it actually can. And, and, uh, and then you'll just be happier. Long term, you're just, you're gonna be a lot more satisfied with your purchase if you get a little bit smaller camper or you wind up getting a little bit bigger truck and or you just adjust your driving kind of expectations and type to accommodate for the heavier trailer, right? If you're willing to go 50, 55 uphills, you might be able to keep things alive longer. So, anyway guys, um, I think we'll end that one here. As always, thanks for watching. God bless America, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.